From the Forest View Educational Center in Arlington Heights, Sports Channel presents the Illinois High School Association 1995 State Boys Gymnastics Championships. 20 years ago at this meet, a young student from Niles West came out of this competition and launched himself on an international gymnastics career that took him to Olympic gold. His name, Bart Connor, a two-time all-around champion here in Illinois. Will there be a new Bart Connor tonight? We shall see. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Lederman, joined by another outstanding former Illinois all-around champion, Rob Brown. Rob, we talk about Bart Connor. Whether we'll get another one or not really isn't the issue, but how good is this field? This is one of the deepest competitive groups we've seen in quite a few years. We're going to see some great gymnastics tonight and some really tough competition. Matt Shane, the all-around champion, he has already been crowned all-around champion, not only in the preliminaries for this year, but last year as well. The one-man team from Arlington Heights St. Vider High School. Matt not only repeated this year, he came back stronger and better. Really, it was tough to catch him this year. We're going to see some great gymnastics from him today. We are going to see tonight many of these same competitors who are in the all-around in the individual competition, the six skills. Let's talk about some of the competitors. From Hinsdale Central, the odds-on uh, team champion or favorite for the team championship, Hinsdale Central, Jeff Means, and he also had a very strong all-around performance. And Jeff is a great all-around athlete. He's the anchor for Hinsdale Central. We're going to see him on quite a few events tonight. He's, again, very consistent, very clean. Should be some good gymnastics. You're also going to see a freshman from Glenbard West. His name is Josh Levin. He threw a 9.8 up, the highest score. And if he does that tonight, it'll be a new state record. Not only is it exciting to see a freshman competing with some of the veterans here tonight, we may see a new state record on the pommel horse from Jeff tonight. Josh Levin threw a 9.8 up there in the preliminaries, but for it to count, it's got to come here in the finals. We may see it. And one other person to keep an eye on, his name is Mike Bush. He finished second in the all-around. Mike, also very consistent, a very strong gymnast. He's going to do some great things tonight on high bar. Look to see some very exciting things. Mike Bush, a senior from Lenbrook North. Okay, you can hear the crowd. They're getting ready to go, and so will we right after this. Here's the scene at uh, the Forest View Educational Center in Arlington Heights. Right now they are awarding the top finishers in the all-around competition. And again, just to reiterate, this is contested during the preliminaries. There is Josh Levin on the left, Mike Mirabelli to his left. And this is Jeff Means who finished third. Levin and Mirabelli tied for fourth. Jeff from Hinsdale Central, Josh from Glenbard West, Mike from Libertyville. Jeff Means also has been voted the senior gymnast of the year in Illinois. Quite an honor for him. He will be going to uh, school at the U.S. Military Academy. That's correct. On the all around, with where a he score hopes of to compete for Army. Averaging Along with uh, the number two finisher, another plebe to be Mike from Glenbrook Bush. North. Here's Mike Bush. And we're going to see a lot of these gentlemen tonight in the individual events. And Mike was warming up in his Army t shirt, so he's, he's ready to go. He's ready to go. And it uh, looks like Army did a heck of a job recruiting out of Illinois this year. You bet. And here is, for the second straight year, the all-around champion from St. Vider High School in Arlington Heights. Here is Matt Shane. Matt Shane, only the sixth person in Illinois history in the 38 years of this meet to win back-to-back all-arounds. And Rob, you know how tough that can be, because you won one. And I had to work my way up. I was third, sophomore year, second, junior year, and then finally won it my senior year, and that was no cakewalk. And the... Uh, Awards were presented by another two-time winner, John Wasick, from Mundelein. As we take a look at the top five finishers, the top four places with Levin and Mirabelli tying for fourth place. 56-10, an improvement on Shane's point total from a year ago when he also finished first. Okay, the judging is always an interesting topic to discuss here in gymnastics meets. And uh, 
Rob spoke with one of the judges with how the numbers get recorded. We know in gymnastics the athlete is not going up against the clock to get his time for the final standings. He's being judged according to what he does by an official. I thought what we'd do is take a look at what the official's actually doing on the paper to tabulate a gymnast score. Now right here our official is writing down the skills and we just had a fall and he's going to mark down a fall on his paper and now the athlete's going to move into his scissors. We'll see specific marks on that paper that designate scissors and you can see him making slash marks, arrows, that's telling him you know this was a deduction, the athlete did this at this point and from this he's going to go back and count up the deductions and count up the parts to make sure the athlete did all the things he was required to do. Now, CJ, can you tell us exactly uh, what you're going to do at this point? First off, I'm going to try to get in from the 5-9, take off the 14 tenths in deductions, which gives him out there a 4-5. Anyway, special requirements are fulfilled, working all ends of the horse, and his legs work, work, work fine. So that's another 1.2, so that's a 5-7. And the last category that we look at is the actual um, skills and they have, did he have the proper amount of skills and in this routine he has a complete amount of skills which is 2.0 so the routine that I would have thrown for that score is 7.7 .7, plus the originality of unusually seen skills of the backside travels of his C value moves that he uses quite well I'm gonna go another two tenths bonus so I'm coming up with a score of 7.9 that'll be my final tabulation to the judge so. judging is so subjective anyway Rob again every judge's score does not count here Right? That's right. There's going to be four scores tonight on each event. They will throw out the high score and the low score. They will average the two middle scores. And that's your final, final score. The way the meet is run, as we look at the judges, two events will be run simultaneously. First, the floor exercise and the pommel horse. We'll have one contestant from each, starting with the floor exercise. And there is Dave Barron from Libertyville. And he will... Get ready for the first routine. Barron tied for ninth in the prelims. And Dave mounts with a nice run of foot flop back with a full twist. And now he's doing skills that we normally see on the pommel horse, some double eight circles. And here's a nice V sit. And that's a strength part, which is a required skill on the floor. And there's a front flip to, to a head spring and this is called a scale and another requirement on the floor we're going to see quite a bit is a balance on one arm or one leg and this last pass on a back handspring full nice clean finish had to take a step on the dismount a very clean routine not necessarily packed with difficulty but clean Dave Barron, the senior from Libertyville. We will have his score in a moment. Meanwhile, let's go over to his teammate on the pommel horse. Here is Mike Mirabelli. Mirabelli, fifth in the prelims with an 8.95 score. But again, in all these events, it's a clean slate, Rob. Anybody can win. We're all starting from zero. Anything can happen. And Mike swings horse very well. He's got beautiful extension. He's now moving through what are called scissors. Those are required parts on the pommel horse. There's a travel downhill without the pommels. And there's a handstand dismount. Nice routine. Again, clean, sweet, and to the point, fulfilling his requirements. That's going to score very well. For Mike Mirabelli. Now we're waiting the scores for Dave Barron. We're looking now at Mike Bush. Score for Dave Barron on the floor exercise. 9.0. Next up on the floor as Dave Barron gets a 9.00, improving his 8.9. Now here's Mike Bush, tied for first place in this event in the prelims. And now we're going to see some real power tumbling. There's a tuck double pack. Nice landing, small hop. There's another round of back handspring. An Arabian double front. And obviously the difference there is on his first pass, landed on his feet. In this pass, he rolled out of it. So more difficult, those head landings. And again, we saw more of those pommel horse type skills on the floor, the double eight circles. 
press the handstand that fulfills his strength requirements. And another unusual skill. Usually, the athlete would go off his hands to his feet and then go into a flip. He went from his hands again into a roll. Very difficult. You see why Bush was the leader here in the preliminaries. In his last pass, run off a flop full. And there's that stuck landing. Great routine. We've got difficulty. We've got originality. And we've got nice, clean gymnastics. That's going to score very well. Good roar from the crowd for Mike Bush. Now let's check the scores for Mike Mirabelli on the pommel horse. And they will be coming as you look at the scoreboard. Next up on the pommel horse will be the all-around champion, Matt Shane. And we're having a conference by the pommel horse judges. And what they're doing at this point, the two middle scores have to be within a certain range. And if those judges are out of range, the head judge will call everyone and say, hey, listen, guys, we're not even close. And they'll go through the routine, and they'll try to work things out and get their scores together. Well, let's take a look at Mike Bush right here at the end of his floor exercise routine. And there's the round of back handspring. And there's the full twist in the layout position. And the nice landing, no movement in the feet. Great job. And we'll have his score in a moment. Meanwhile, as you look at Matt Shane, we're getting the score still. 9.20. Next Matt up on the horse. Mike Mirabelli, 9.20. A significant improvement over his 8.95 fifth place finish. Now. Here is Matt Shane, all-around champion. And he mounts with loops, and he does what's called a Magyar travel. He travels all the way across the horse. It's called a back more up. And again, the scissors. Now he's going to get ready for his dismount. There's a back travel without the pommels. And again, that Hanson, ooh, a little trouble. Nice routine. You saw him have a little trouble in that dismount. He had to hesitate, bend his arms. That's going to be a small deduction. And we talk about the depth in this competition. You cannot give away those small deductions if you want to win. Well, we'll take a look at it again and point it out, Rob. Watch. Here he set up. And watch. He has to stop his motion, kind of catch himself. You see the bend in his arms. He corrects it and then finishes off. But that's going to cost him a tenth. Matt Shane completing his pommel horse routine. We're looking for Mike Bush's exercise. score on the floor exercise. And here it comes. A 9.50 for Mike Bush. Best for him. And that puts him uh, ahead of the first two competitors. Here on floor exercise is John Vandell of Addison Trail. And John opened with uh, something that's kind of unusual, has just gotten more popular the last couple of years, and that's front tumbling. That was a layout front with a full twist. Press handstand, the Healy turn. And now some back tumbling. Whip back, whip back, another back to a punch front. Nice combination of skills. We saw three back flips, and then he rebounds into a front flip. And there's that scale, and that was a little short, a little shaky. And although it seems simple, a lot of times that's where you'll, you'll have a small break. And there's a front step out through the run of a flop, lay out back. Nice routine. Again, we saw some small bobbles. And again, in this competition, you cannot give away those extra tenths. John Vandell, a junior from Addison Trail, tied for fourth in the preliminaries at 9.15. We'll have his score. Let's show you the finish of his routine. And again, there's a front flip. He steps right out of that. Round offs into back tumbling. There's a runner for flop. Layout back. And again, the nice landing. Nice finish. Matt Shane scored a 9.05 in his pommel horse routine. Again, the deductions were there, and it was the exact same score he received in the preliminaries. Here now is the freshman, Josh Levin. And this is an incredible mount. He mounts with two back mores on one pommel, back loops. There's a spindle. Beautiful Magyar travel. Look at the extension. No form breaks. Another spindle. Right now, he's done more in his routine than we'll see in any of the other athletes' whole routine. 9.8 in the preliminaries if 
he achieves that or better, it will be a new Beautiful. Beautiful. There were no breaks. It was filled with difficulty. He just laid it right in the judge's lap to say, hey guys, I did it all. What are you going to score me? A happy group from Glenbard West, and here's part of the routine for or Josh. Now watch this. He does three or four hand placements on that one pommel, and then into his dismount. Great routine. Zero. Next up on the floor from opponent high school. John Bandell from Addison Trail on the floor exercise. That's his score, a 9.30. Now, here is Matt Goldstein. Beautiful mount. Tuck double back way up there. Cole leader in this event after the preliminaries. And here's his strength part. Press the handstand. And he's required to hold that handstand for about two seconds, which he did. This is Goldstein's best event. He's from Conan High School in Hoffman Estates. Also the second place finisher in Class AA wrestling at 112 pounds this past winter. Beautiful combination of front tumbling. We saw some bounding fronts. There's his balance on one leg. And his dismount, run off back handspring, whip back to a layout back. Great set, and you can see him fighting for that landing. He knows how important every tenth is. Matt Goldstein, a junior from Conan High School. We'll show you the end of the routine. Round off back handspring, whip back, right to another back. Those are called bounders. Nice finish and a nice landing. And the roar you're hearing is for the score of Josh Levin. He has broken the state record, which has stood in part since 1972 at 9.75 with a 9.8. And he is only a freshman. That was an incredible routine. Deserved to beat the record. Some fantastic gymnastics. On the pommel horse right now, Jonathan Pomeranz from miles north. And we see him working without the pommels. That's going to increase the difficulty value of the skills. And now he breaks into the Thomas flares, and he travels in a flare. And here's his scissor skills. Scissor hop. And now he's going to move to the end. There's a travel down. And a nice loop around this mount. Nice set. We saw some very difficult skills. But again, a little tight, some form breaks. And again, when you're going up against some of the top guys in the state, you can't give away those tents. Pomerantz only a junior, an 8.6 in the prelims. And here's the end of his routine again. He just finished those scissors, picks up in the circles. We can see the small knee bends and the dismount, and those all add up. Otherwise, a nice routine, some nice difficult parts. Matt Goldstein with a 9.40, which puts him in second place right now in the floor exercise. Here is Matt Wall from Hinsdale Central, tied for fourth in the prelims. And Matt did a nice front step out through the run of a full. Nice combination of skills, back extension roll to a Healy turn. In his strength part, press the handstand. Very clean. A combination of bounding fronts, a tuck to a layout front, and another bounding front. And his last pass. Another round of up full. Great landing. Nice clean set. Fifth up, Matt Wall. Nice routine for the senior from Hinsdale Central. Coach Neil Kupika congratulating him as we take a look at the end of Matt Wall's routine. Look at the nice, clean body position, beautiful height, stretch, and of course, the nice landing. Great finish. For Jonathan Pomerantz, an 8.95 on his pommel horse routine.
an improvement over his 8.6 in the preliminaries. Now, on the horse, here's Michael Signo of Hinsdale Central. Well, you know, those Red Devils are well represented. And he's swinging very nice. A nice combination on the pommels. Do a scissors, that's called a scissor hop to the end. Another scissor hop to the end. And there's again a back treble without the ball. Ooh, and he had some trouble on that back treble. He had to stop. At that point, that stop, that's a major deduction. It's going to be anywhere from three to five tenths with the execution errors. And uh, again, he was managing able to keep composure and, and work through his dismount. I will show you how that happened. Here Here's is the Michael Signal. Back travel with his hands off the pommel. Now right here, he catches his leg, and he's down. At that point, it's just really tough to keep it moving. He's just going to go ahead and work it over. Nice to keep his composure and finish up. On the floor exercise, a 9.20 for Matt Wall. It's him in fourth place right now. Here is Chad Lanham from uh, Chicago Heights Bloom. Tied for fourth in the prelims. Check it, he was tied for ninth in the prelims at an 8.9. And there's a beautiful layout front with a full twist. And a nice show of flexibility in the splits. And the strength part, press to handstand. A little trouble, and that's one of those judgment calls. You don't know if the judges are gonna give him that skill or not. How much creativity do they have here as opposed to their requirements? Oh, nice dismount. Tuck double back. Sorry to cut you off on that question. In, in, the optionals, in the optional routine, the athlete can create the routine around the skills that he's best at. And he's, he's taking what he's good at and trying to build his routine around the requirements. So you're going to see guys that, hey, might be good at front tumbling. They'll put a lot of front, front tumbling in their routine. Some others may be better at back tumbling. They'll opt to go that way. For the signal, an 8.20. Again, Rob, you mentioned the major deductions that he had. Tough break for Michael Signal. Here up on the pommel horse now is Dave Barron, who you saw on the floor exercise earlier from Libertyville. Beautiful flare. Look at the extension, the height of the legs. Some fancy leg work there. And now with scissors. Double leg circles again, the back travel without the pommel. And a double loop off. Nice set. Great routine, kept it moving. He was clean again, no major breaks. And that's how you score well. We'll take a look at some more of Barron's routine on the pommel horse. And again, here's that dismount. He's gonna travel without the pommel. Now here's some back loops, right to a back loop dismount. Nice routine. Waiting for the score now from Chad Lanham on the floor exercise as we take a look here at Nate Knight from Homewood Flossmoor. And Nate's got kind of an original mount. Lanham with an 8.95 as we look at Nate Knight. And Nate did a very original mount. He did a standing back punch front and a quarter. And Nate tried a strength skill that he had a little trouble on. Nice combination of front tumbling. This is one leg balance, the scale. <laughs> and run up back handspring, tucked double back. Oh, and had a little trouble on that landing. Had to go down, put pressure on his hands again. That's going to be a four or five tenth deduction. Nate Knight, the senior from home with Flossmoor, tied for seventh in the preliminaries. And we'll show you what happened at the end of that routine. And he just looks a little tired, a little flat. Here's the back handspring. You can see the arms crunch a little bit. Just doesn't get the rotation he needs. He's pulling it, he's pulling it. Just doesn't have enough there. He's got to touch out the hands. The major break. That will cost him. Dave Barron, an 8.85 to go with uh, the pommel horse, to go with the 9.00 on the floor exercise. And up on the horse now, and having a problem right away, is Brandon Simone of Palatine. And and going to have to restart. And Brandon, of course, has uh, 30 seconds to remount. He'll talk to his coach, 
Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say restart. You've got to pick up the routine from where he's done. You, you pick up where you fell off. Uh, and that's what he's asking his coach. Hey, where do I start? He's going to tell him, hey, start here. You'll, you'll get an extra trick. He was trying a skill that we haven't seen tonight. He was traveling backwards without the pommels. Simone is sixth place finisher in the preliminaries at 8.90. Beautiful back more down. Now he's working on the end. Nice walk around to loop off. Nice finish. And again, it's tough. Once you've got a major break, it's tough to keep your composure. It was a great finish to that routine. Here we see the finish. Here's that back more down. He's working behind his back on the pommel. Very difficult. There's the walk around on the end and the loop off. Nice job. 8.35 for Nate Knight on his floor exercise. Here's Charles Nelson from Oak Park River Forest. 8.9 in the preliminaries. And again, Charles opts to mount with the front tumbling, which again has become more popular in the last couple years. Beautiful press handstand. And the second pass, run up back handspring full. Nice show of flexibility for a male athlete in the back walkover. And a slightly different scale than we've seen tonight. This is called a wide Y scale. And here's his last pass. Maybe not his last pass. That was a nice handspring layout front. And here we go. Run off back handspring layout back. Ooh, tried to stick that landing, had to take a small step. Charles Nelson, senior from Oak Park, eighth up here. And we look for Brandon Simone's score, an 8.05. Brandon had the problem at the start of the routine. Now here is Mike Bush, finished third in this event in the preliminaries with a 9.1. He's got to go some to challenge Josh Levin at 9.80. It's a beautiful mount of Magyar Travel. He uses all parts of the horse. Nice back more up. Beautiful skill right there. Forehand placements on one pommel. And look at that. He put his hands on the outside of both pommels. Very difficult. Scissor skills. He's going to pick back up and prepare for his dismount. Another travel without the pommels. Wow, and that last skill was called a tongue fake. He goes from the leather on one end of the horse all the way to the other. Great routine. Might not get first, but might get second. Here's the scissors. He's going to pick up. Now watch this dismount. He travels to the end without the pommels. There's the travel. Now watch this. He's going to put both hands on the end, reach over the pommel, the other end into the dismount. Great finish. Meanwhile, Charles Nelson, who had uh, only the problem on the finish, uh, Charles Nelson with an 8.85. And here is Dan Salava from Rolling Meadows, a senior. Tied for ninth in the preliminaries with an 8.90. And Dan mounted the run off up back, and I'm going to guess that that was not the skill he wanted to do. I think he might have had some trouble and didn't go for the double back. So at this point, he's going to be short on difficulty. Let's see if he can pick it up somewhere in the rest of this routine. And spring lay out front. Ooh, again, a little trouble on that landing. These are the finals. Can come up and bite you. It's easy to get nervous. Off back handspring, put back, put back, to a full. Great finish. Great finish. Three backflips, a third one with a full twist. Very difficult combination. As you can imagine, he's not happy, but boy, did he finish strong. Dan Salava from Rolling Meadows. Here's the dismount. Watch. One whip, two whips, and on the third back, he puts a full twist on it. Great finish. A little trouble on the landing, but a great combination of skills. Meanwhile, Mike Bush on the pommel horse comes up with a 9.60, good for second place behind Josh Levin. Now here is Jeff Means, second in this event in the preliminaries, a 9.25. Means from Hinsdale Central. This should be an interesting routine. 
Ooh, and he has trouble on that first skill. He's got to take the 5 10 fall, and again, he's got 30 seconds to regroup. He had a little trouble on that skill yesterday where he had a small form break, and again, it's giving him trouble tonight. He was second in this event as a junior last year. And he jumps back into flares. And here's a travel, travel sequence. And again, outside the pommels, very difficult. Beautiful flare. Nice high scissors. <laughs> and a nice front out loop off this mount. Nice routine. Unfortunately, had some trouble on that first go. Jeff Means, the senior, fine all around gymnast. Here he is, finishing up. And Jeff's got some of the nicest scissors we've seen tonight. He picks up, there's the front out and the loop off. Nice finish to, unfortunately, a, a troubled routine. Dan Salava, who had the problem, came in still with an 8.70. Here is Matt Shane, our all-around champion now. Watch this mount. Mark back handspring, double layout, unbelievable. That's an international level skill. They rate these skills from A to D, Rob, don't they? That probably that's, was a B. That's, you're absolutely right. Oh! And he added something from last night. He was going to do a double back punch front. He made the double back, but had trouble on that punch front. And Big deduction, medium deduction? Major break. That's a 5-10 fall. And there's a skill. The interesting thing is, I don't think he needed to do that skill to win this event tonight. So, you know, he opted to go all out. And another tuck double. And some trouble on the landing. He had to take a couple of steps. Had to beat 9.5, and that is academic with the major deduction. So Matt Shane started strong, but had problems in the middle. Hacked with difficulty. Here's that dismount. Round off back handspring. Tuck double back. And it, oh, that was the trouble spot right there. There's that punch front. And again, was bent over, did not get the height he needed on that front flip, and had to take the fall. Still waiting for the score now on the pommel horse from Jeff Means. And the judges, uh, looks like, are going to have a conference. As you look at uh, the next competitor, Mike Alcantara from Glenbrook South, he will have a bit of a wait. And you explained this before, if the judges are very far apart, they have to caucus. Huh? What they're doing, as we saw in that piece earlier uh, t today, they're going through each category as they score, and they say, hey, are we all straight on this? Do you guys all see the same thing? Do they have the same skills? And they'll work their way through and say, oh, hey, half of us are saying this, half are saying that. Let's come together on this and uh, see if we can't come up with the final score. With Matt Shane's routine, where he started so strongly, do you think he just wanted to go for as much as he could? Here he is a two-time all-around champion. He's really got nothing to lose here. He just let it all hang out and see maybe he could break some new ground. That, that might be it very well. Usually an all-around athlete is really keyed on the all-around championship. And the finals is kind of an extra bonus uh, situation. So that might be the case. He maybe was out there having some fun, wanted to try a new skill. Well, we'll show you to you at the beginning. Quite an explosive entry for Matt Shane. And watch this. He is just flying. Here it is. Double back. He stretches it out. Whoa. Great landing. And again, I don't think that's even been done in Illinois gymnastics. Well, we're still waiting for the score here on the pommel horse, and the judges are... Uh... Here's Jeff Means' score now. 8.75. 8 Next up on the pommel horse from Glenbrook South High School, Mike... Again, he had the break in the routine, and he will not finish second tonight. And here is Mike Alcantara, a senior from Glenbrook South. And he mounts with back loops, quarter spindle, travels, middle. Beautiful set of skills. Two loops on one pommel. There's a scissor hop half. Picks up in the circles. Travel down, and here's a walk around on the end. To a loop off. Great routine. Way to go, and he is pumped. Mike Alcantara, he had uh, an 8.55 in the preliminary. Tied for ninth place, really the last place here, but certainly seems to have improved on that. You can see he is happy. Here's a look. Swinging beautifully, nice extension. His legs are together and straight. There's the walk around. 
And the loop off. Great routine, great finish. Meanwhile, Matt Shane, 8.65 for his floor exercise routine. Now here is Mike Mirabelli. And he mounts with bounders, two layout backflips. And look at that, that's called a mana stand. Incredible difficulty. And he's going to press right to handstand. Another very difficult skill. That's a beautiful press handstand. And there's a handspring, front handspring to front. And again, here's some pommel horse work on the floor. Beautiful flare spindle. Very difficult. The Y scale, his balance on one leg. And now the last pass, run a flip up layout. And the nice finish, sticks to landing. Great routine. Mirabelli with a 9.20 on the pommel horse. There's his floor exercise routine. We'll show you the end of it. Run off back handspring layout. Nice height, good extension. And again, very clean routine, but maybe lacking the difficulty that we've seen in some of the other routines tonight. There is Mike Alcantara. He scored a 9.15. Good for fourth place. Unofficially now with the pommel horse field complete. Josh Levin with the new state record 9.80 is the winner. Second is Mike Bush with a 9.60. Third, Mike Mirabelli, 9.20. And Mike Alcantara, the final finisher there. Fourth at... 9.15. We still have two more. Boy, I tell you what, that looks like my kid's math paper. That is a judging tablet right there. And they, that's and basically a diagram of the routine. There. Exactly. Uh, tomorrow you could go ask the judge, hey, what about this routine? And he could tell you from that shorthand what that routine was, what the deductions were. And, uh, and again, that's You've got to be able to do that because you will be challenged and you will be asked why certain scores came up the way they did. Mike Mirabelli, a 9.35, looks to move him into second place with two more competitors here on the floor exercise. Our next competitor from Hersey High School right here in Arlington Heights, D'Angelo Hinton, a junior. 8.9 in the prelim. Great combination of front time, like three front flips, and the last one puts an extra quarter flip on it and lands in the prone position. And this skill is called a Maltese. Great show of strength. Most commonly seen on the still rings. And there's his balance on one leg, front scale. Another set of great back tumbling combination. Two bounders in that pass and a punch front. And again, I keep talking about bounding and combinations. And here's his last pass on a flay. Flip up, layout, punch front. Nice routine. D'Angelo Hinton, the junior from Arlington Heights, Hersey. Looking to improve on an 8.9. We'll show it to you. You really like this routine, Robin. Right? Very explosive, very virtuous. Here's that last pass, layout, and goes other way, punch front, and sticks the landing. That's tough to do on those front flips. And again, we talked about, I keep mentioning combination. In the last couple of years, they've added some things to the judging codes. And they're giving more bonus points when you combine skills one after another. And that's why we're seeing these bounding skills. Front after front, back after back. And the same is true on actually every event tonight, except for vault. And here the final competitor. He's already got a state record in his pocket. Josh Levin. Did not do particularly well here on the floor exercise, tied for ninth. And we're just going to wait for the <laughs> judges to get set. And we will get to Josh Levin. Score 
scores are coming out now for D'Angelo Hinton from Arlington Heights Hersey. A 9.40, which ties him for second place, according to my very unofficial notes. Here's Josh Levin, 8.9 in the prelims. And Arnold double back, and he added that from last night. Again, tried to add more difficulty to go for a higher score. Had a little trouble, though, had to touch his hands. And again, taking advantage of his excellent pommel horse work. There's beautiful flare spin on the floor. Fantastic. Nice straddle plus handstand. And there's bounding fronts. to do the y, y scale to fulfill that one leg balance. And off back handspring full. And again, a little trouble on the landing. Had to take a large step. Possibly a little tired. It's been a long weekend, a tough, tough competition the other night. Josh Levin, he's the final competitor in the floor exercise. It looks like Mike Bush has taken first in that to go with his second in the pommel horse. We'll have the official results in the award ceremonies and move on to the rings and the vault after this. Here are the top finishers in the floor exercise. In fourth place, Mike Mirabelli of Libertyville with a 9.35. Tied for second, Matt Goldstein, 9.40. Along with D'Angelo Hinton, who really made a big jump. And Mike Bush from Glenbrook North takes top place with 9.50. And here is Mike Bush, army bound. Mike's a very explosive tumbler. And here is his second pass, beautiful Arabian one and three. And again, very difficult because he's going in with the head first landing. Matt Goldstein, who had finished fourth in this event a year ago, moves up to a tie for second. And uh, Mike Bush, very, very strong routine. And again, we just saw him do some double leg circles on the floor. Meanwhile, the pommel horse. Matt Shane in fifth place with a 9.05. Mike Alcantara, who Final competitor had a good routine, 9.15. Mirabelli of Libertyville, his second placing. This time he takes a third. Mike Bush, who had won Florex, takes second here. And, of course, the big news from the freshman, Josh Levin of Glenbard West. A new state record, 9.80 in this event. And, again, just a freshman. And, again, watch the speed extension of his body. Here's a spindle, and now he's going to travel all the way across the horse. Look at that. One pound on the other, back all the way to the other side. Again, no form breaks. Another spindle. Again, skill after skill. We talked about combination. Difficult skill after difficult skill. That's where you get your bonus. That's why he scored so well. Where do you see him in a couple of years? Do you see him as national caliber? Absolutely. If he can, again, he's got to mature more physically. He's got to get physically stronger. And again, that'll just come with age. He's got a great future ahead of him. Well, nice medal tonight. We'll be back with more after this. The still rings. This is Tim Fitzsimons, a senior from Glenbrook South in Glenview. 8.90 in the preliminaries. And Tim Schoen has a nice show of strength. He did a cross to an L position and then pulled out of that L cross. And there's a press to handstand. A nice bail. Pike double back. Nice routine. A little trouble on the landing, but nice swing to handstand. Nice strength moves. Great way to start rings. All right. Don't blink now as we uh, show you the end. We have the vault next with Nate Knight. 
And there's that pike position, tuck double back. And again, a little short of landing, had to take that step forward. All right, here is Nate Knight from Homer Flossmore, first up. And he won the set prelims. Beautiful swimmer in the layout position. Great fall, great landing. Really setting the pace here. Checking the Simon score first. Let's take a look at Knight's vault again. And watch, he's going to do a round off onto the horse and a backflip in the stretch position. And again, look for the floor. Small step, but a great vault. Beautiful height, beautiful distance. Second up is Mike Polaric on the rings from Hinsdale Central. Polaric, 8.95 to start. Tim Fitzsimons with a 9.00 on the rings, and now we will see Polaric. to L. Nice straight arm. Legs together, press handstand. And it's called a back joint to handstand. He's going to power down. There's the cross. And now again, pulls the leg up into the L cross and pulls out of it. Again, very difficult. Another press to handstand. Working well. A bail, tuck double back. And again, nice routine. A little short on his handstands, a little, just a, not very sharp. Had all the difficult parts. Nice routine. And here's one of his presses to handstand. Again, never really gets pushed out in that handstand. And there's the bail. Double back in the tuck position. Had to take a small step. At the vault, Nate Knight has recorded a 9.60. That'll be a 6-0. That'll be tough to beat. Better than his 9.45. Here's Mike Bush, a first and a second already tonight. Another great Sukahara in the layout position. Went way out on the landing. And again, on vault, you're looking for height and distance. Watch this. Again, here's the half on. Way up in the air. Look at that. He's got to be three meters away from the horse. Bush is again, having a night already, a first and second in the first two events. And now we'll check uh, Polaric's score as we wait for that on the still score ring. for Mike Polaric on the still ring. There is Randy Watts. 8.75. 8.75 8 for Hinsdale Central's Mike Polaric. Here is Watts. Seven at 8.95 in the prelims, preliminaries. He is a junior at Hoffman Estates. Great mount. He was a kick right to a cross. And a back roll to an cross, and he pulls out. And again, it's the combination of these strength parts that's going to give him the bonus in this routine. Press the handstand. And now he's got a swing. There's the front giant to handstand. Back up rise. And another strength part. Double back and had trouble in the landing. Had to touch out. Had a great set going up to that point. But the major break on the landing. Randy Watts from Hoffman Estates. Let's look at that landing again, and you can tell us what went wrong. Rob. Right here, it looked like he wanted to hold that skill a little longer. It's called a planche. He bails into the tuck to the back. He really comes out of his tuck too soon. Has to touch out. That's going to be anywhere from four to five tenths. Mike Bush with a 9.4. And our puts him in second place after the first two competitors in the vault. Here is Anthony Cirillo, a sophomore from Homewood Flossmore. 9.25 in the preliminaries. We ask that you exit to the southern part of the commons area and proceed down the hallway leading to the restroom. We will continue to keep you posted if this situation does develop. We just, uh, we just had an announcement. I guess there's a tornado warning in the area and they're just alerting everybody to say they might 
have to move to a safer area, which uh, is just uh, a precaution. But nobody's moving yet, and they haven't asked anybody to move. And here is Cirillo with something else to think about now as he tries to meddle here. Also opts to go with the Sukara type vault. And he does it in the open tuck position. Nice vault, not quite as difficult as the ones we've seen in the stretch position. And again, the Sukahara starts with the half on, off the horse. Now he's flipping backwards. You can see he's in a tuck position, but his hands aren't on his knees. Had to take a large step, but still a nice vault. Randy Watts on the still rings an 8.60. And now here is Teddy Holub, the sophomore from Glenbard West. Teddy mounts with a backup rise to handstand. Nice stretch position on that handstand. Backup rise to L. And this is called a Maltese cross. One of the most difficult strength parts. And now he goes to regular cross. L cross and pull out. Great set of strength skills. And that's a strength part of the handstand called a hollow back press. And it's dismount, tuck the back. Had to take a step on the landing, but what a show of strength. Three incredible strength moves back to back. Ola looking to improve from an 8.90. There's the Maltese. You can see how he's got to hold the rings out. That is Side of his body, there's a cross, L cross, and pulls out. What an incredible show of strength. Anthony Cerullo, a 9.0 on his vault. Down some from the 9.25. Here is D'Angelo Hinton, who tied for second place earlier in the floor exercise. And it looks like we may have a original vault here. We've got a new configuration in landing mats. And second in this event with a 9.4, so he's got to beat a 9.6. That knight put up there. Wow. Another Sukahara, but man, did he explode up the horse. Great vault. Skied it. Watch this. He's got plenty of speed. Blocks off the horse. He's way in the air. Look at that. And again, the distance, incredible. Great vault. Had a little trouble on the landing, but man, did he get some bonus back for the distance and the height. Teddy Holub on the still rings, a 9.05, but an 8.90. And here you're looking at his teammate from Fort Worth West. Joe Kerman had a 9.25 and finished second in the preliminaries. There is a beautiful back up as the handstand. Another swing skill to a straddle L. And here's a strength part, a cross. Again, up to the L cross, pulls out. Nice job. And now he's going to do a strength skill to handstand, hollow back press. Nice handstand. Nice dismount, bail, tuck double back. Sticks to landing. Fantastic. And I think that's the first stuck landing we've seen on the Stillings tonight. Just what I thought. Joe Kerman, Jr., following the sophomore. So they've got a lot of depth there, Glenbard West, in this event. And again, we talked earlier about every 10th counting and sticking these landings like he just did makes all the difference in the world. D'Angelo Hinton, who you saw do that original vault, came up with a 9.55. Good for second place right now behind Nate Knight. Here is that wall from Hinsdale Central. And that is a Sukahara in the pike position. Had a little trouble in the landing. Had to touch out one hand. That's probably going to be a three-tenth deduction. Looked like he was maybe a little high on the pre-flight and couldn't get the push off the horse he needed. Let's take a look. Wall the senior from Hinsdale Central. Here he comes. And again, right here, he just doesn't get the block off the horse he needs. Doesn't have the height or the rotation. Has to touch out. Waiting now for Joe Kerman's score on the still rings. As you look at Joel Page, 
senior from Lincoln away. 9.20 in his first effort. Nine point three five for Joel Kerman, and that puts him into the lead unofficially ahead of Fitzsimons of Glenbrook South. Here is Joel Page. He threw a nine two. Joel mounts with a back kick to cross. And again, the L cross. Another kip, and there's another Maltese cross. Incredible strength we're seeing tonight. And a nice straddle press to handstand. And Joel really shows some authority when he does these skills. There's no questioning that he can do them. Nice position. And we haven't seen tonight. That was an inverted cross. Bails right into his swing part. And the dismount pipe double back. Some trouble on the dismount, but a lot of difficulty in that routine. He may be able to overcome that step on the landing. Page tied for third earlier, and we'll show you Joel Page. There was that inverted cross we haven't seen tonight. He bails through a high dislocate, and a double back in the pike position right here. Should have come out a little early. Had to take the big step backwards. That was the only break in that routine. Back on the vault, Matt Wall with a 9.0. And here is Chuck Karn from Naperville North. 9.20, his first vault. His preliminary vault. There's only one vault per night. Chuck also do, does the Sukahara. He tried to do it in an open pike position. Had a lot of trouble on that landing. And again, let's watch what happens on the horse here. This is where most of the troubles begin. Kind of high on the horse, doesn't get the push he needs. And again, tries to do that in an open position, just does not have the rotation that he needs and has to really overwork it and fall backwards. Still waiting for Joel Page's scores as you look at uh, Jim Wigg of Conan High School. He'll be next up as soon as the judges come up with a total for Joel Page. Leader right now is Paige's predecessor, Joe Kerman, at 9.35. And Paige will go into first place with a 9.45. Now here is Wig. Cross, back up rise to cross, an L cross, unbelievable. Look how straight his arms are, very level. And again, that hollow back strength, the handstand. And he swings. It's called a back giant. He has a little trouble. He's picked up some swing. White double back and stands it up. Great routine again, some breaks, but such an incredible show of strength and combination at the start of that routine. He may be able to overcome some of those breaks. Wig was fifth in this event last year with an 8.95. And again, here's where he got into trouble. Here's that back giant. You can see the ring shaking a little bit. He's swinging on the rings. Of course, that's a small deduction, but he was able to stay composed and takes a small step on the landing. Keith Strawn with the ball. Strawn from Mundelein. Chuck Karn, who had preceded him with an 8.80. Strawn a 9.3 to start in the preliminaries. Keith did a great ball. And again, we've seen some rough landings on ball today. Keith, one of the first guys to go ahead and stick a vault landing. Waiting for Jim Wiggs score here on the still rings. And we're going to see there's Jeff Means, who had a disappointing attempt on the pommel horse. And he'd like to make up for that here on the rings, where he threw a 9.15 in the preliminaries. But again, the judges have to come up with a number for Wig.
And I mentioned earlier that uh, something new to the code is a combination of skills. And on ranks today, we're seeing uh, several strength parts, one after another. And again, you're fulfilling your requirements in the routine, and you're getting bonus for combining them one after another. It never fails to amaze me, the show of strength moves on the rings. Again, you're suspended, you're on a platform, you're, you're, you're in midair. The still rings, of course, is a misnomer, if there ever was one, because you've got to keep them still. You're absolutely right, and I guess it's hard to, to if you haven't done the sport, to get a feel for how incredible it is. It's tough for enough people uh, just to do a handstand on the floor, let alone do it, as you mentioned, on something that's moving. Ten feet in the air. Well, another judge's caucus. Now they have broken the huddle, if you will. And we should have a score shortly for the seventh competitor on the still ring, senior Jim Wig from Hoffman Estates. for Jim Wig, and that puts him into first place. Heavy competition here. Here is Jeff Means. 9.50. Jeff mounts for backup rise to L. And strength skill called a plant. And it drops to a cross. Cross. And again, a combination of strength parts. And now he's going to press the handstand. Beautiful position. Look how straight his body is. Really looks good. Nice front giant to handstand. Some of the best swing we've seen tonight. Another front handstand. Had a little trouble on that one. And this one piped a little back. Great routine. One of the cleanest performances we've seen tonight. He's very clean, very extended. Fun gymnast to watch. Finished 10th in this event a year ago. And here's the dismount, double back in the pike position. He's fighting for that landing and still had to take that small step. Back on the ball, the 9.45 for Keith Strawn. And here is Matt Shane, our all around champion. 9.35 preliminaries. <laughs> Another. One Sugahara, for man. another Sugahara in that layout position. And again, what I think it's coming down to on vault today is who's going to stick the landings and who's going to keep the best form. That's true. One small step for man means one small deduction for a gymnast. And again, there's that stretch body position. He sees the floor right there. Trying to stick that landing has to take that step. Maybe not as explosive as some of the vaults we've seen tonight, but still an excellent vault. Waiting for the score for Jeff Means, and uh, we think it's going to be high. 9.35 puts him in a tie for third, along with Kerman. With the leader at 9.5, Page, five one hundredths behind at 9.45, and here is Mike Bush. Bush, third in this event. In the preliminary round with a 9.20. And he mounts with a nice back cross, back hip to cross, and he drops to what's called a reverse lever. lever. And that skill is called a Yamawaki. Kind of a double front in the rings. I had a stereo. And there's a shoot to Hanson. Again, he's having some troubles. He had to fall out of that. Let's see if he can recover. And he opts to just go for the dismount. Nice tuck double back. Sticks the landing again. Some trouble in that handstand, and, and those are the kind of breaks that you cannot give up in finals. Watch this. He's going to do a dislocate. And he's going to sh... Oh, this is the dismount. Tuck double back. And nice landing. Matt Shane with a 9.50 on the vault. Here is Brandon Tucker from Glenbrook South. Oh, and had trouble in the landing again. It was that Sukahara in the stretch position. To 
Just did not quite get the height he needed and had to touch out his hands. 9.20 on the preliminary for Brandon Tucker. And we go back to the still rings for Mike Bush's numbers. And there is Charles Nelson from Oak Park. Nelson sixth with a 9.05 first effort yesterday. Still no decision from the judges. Here it comes. And we talk about uh, some of the things we're seeing on rings. Uh, really, the code will kind of direct the gymnast as to how his routine is created. You're required to do certain things on the rings. You have to swing to a handstand position. You have to do a strength scale to a handstand position. And then you have to do an additional strength part. So that's why we're seeing all these strength skills. 8.70 from Mike Bush. Disappointing for him. Half a point down from his first effort. Now here is Nelson. Charles does a beautiful shoot to handstand. And there's another front giant locked on. Oh, and he's going to pick up some swing, see if he can save it. And he's in trouble here. And there's another cross. Back up right. And right here, he's got to try to do these skills at the right time to try to kill that swing. It's amazing that he hasn't fallen out of handstand yet. And it's dismount, tuck double back. Nice job. It's kind of unfortunate because he was one of the best swinging guys on rings tonight. Beautiful body line. Arms are locked out. Beautiful. Gutty effort by Nelson. And there you see some of it. And again, with the ring swinging that's hard, it's, it's tough to really put your routine together. The tuck double back, again, over rotates, has to take a step. Tough break for Charles. 9.10 for Brandon Tucker. Here is Matt Goldstein, who tied for second in the floor exercise. And Sukahara, I guess you're going to call that in a stretch position. It, it seemed to be more in an open pipe. And again, we'll see how the judges call it. At 9.25 in the prelims. And now back for Nelson's numbers. And again, you can see him open his body into that stretch position and then bring his feet back down for the landing. One of the cleanest faults we've seen tonight in terms of keeping his legs together and straight. Next on the rings, finally on the rings, we're going to see Matt Shane, who's 9.6 in the preliminaries, uh, electrified this crowd last night, Rob, and really propelled him on his way to the all-around. 8.7 for Charles Nelson. And now we'll watch Matt Shane very carefully. And it's going to be interesting to see if Matt has added any more difficulty to his routine, just in an attempt to uh, you know, get as much out of this as he can. Well, maybe he learned a lesson from the floor exercise and is keeping it under control more and go for another medal. And again, look for Matt to really show nice positions, nice body lines. Beautiful kick to L. And here's a straight arm, legs together press. And again, the inverted cross. Great strength part. Got the L right to front giant. Again, notice how straight the handstand is, the elbows are locked. Wow! Beautiful double back in the rings. One of the most difficult skills we've seen today. Has a little trouble in his handstand. And a double layout this month. Great routine. Again, what a show of power and difficulty. How did that compare to his preliminary routine? That was pretty much the same routine. Watch this. There's the double back in the, in the rings. Does not let go. Incredible skill. And again, here's where he had a little trouble in that handstand, but he recovered nicely. And the dismount, double back in the layout position. 9.35 for Matt Goldstein on the vault. Here is Tim Dare from Hinsdale Central. Tied for six in the preliminary. And a nice Sukahara in the pike position. Again, another very clean vault. Should score well. And again, we're going to see the pike position right here. The body's bent at the hips. The legs are straight. He sees the landing. And again, he's got to stick it. Takes that step backwards. But again, legs together, legs straight, very clean vault. Matt Shane. 
looking to win the still rings in the finals as he did in the preliminaries. A 9.5 will do it. Right now, Joel Page with a 9.45 is the leader. And let's see what the final total for Matt Shane is. Nine point five for Matt Shane. That ties him with Jim Wig for first place unofficially. Nine point five zero. One tenth lower than before. Here on the vault now. Waiting for Tim Deere. Here's Dan Salava. And Dan again does that Sukahara in that layout position. Nice distance, nice, nice height. And again, let's look at his body position in the air, the form. Tim Dare with a 9.25, and here is Salava. Here's in the air. And again, beautiful stretch position, but you can see the slight knee bend and the slight leg separation. And again, one of the best landings we've seen today. Now, Salava had his problems in the floor exercise as well. 9.20 in the vault in the preliminaries. There is one more vaulter to come, Mark Packer from Naperville Central. He also a 9.20. And a 9.30 for Salava. The vault from Naperville Central from Rolling Meadows. And here is Packer, the final contestant in this phase of the competition. D'Angelo Hinton, 9.55, the score to beat. And a nice Sugahara in the tuck position. And again, the great thing about that vault was the distance he got from the actual horse. And again, we'll he's going gonna to get bonus for that distance. I'm sorry, Rob. We'll be back. Uh, with the results of the vault and the still rings and competition in the final two events, the parallel bars and high bar. Here are the results from the vault. The first was the best in this case. Nate Knight finished second a year ago, takes the top prize this year with a 9.60. Second, D'Angelo Hinton from Hersey High School with a 9.55, 9.50 for Matt Shane, who was sixth in the event a year ago. Shane finishing third. Keith Strong from Mundelein. Mike Bush continues to rack up medals. He is fifth at 9.40. And here is a look at the vault of Nate Knight. And we saw quite a few of these vaults tonight, but watch the explosion off the horse. Beautiful form in the air. And, of course, nice landing, only a small step. The funniest Nate Knight is also the top vaulter in the state. Matt Shane, meanwhile, repeats his championship in the still rings with a 9.50, sharing it with Jim Wig from Conan, who came up to do a very nice job there. Uh, Wig was seventh in the preliminary. Joel Page with a fine routine, 9.45 from Lincoln Way. Jeff Means, fourth at 9.35, along with Joe Kerman of Glenbard West. Final two events coming up, the parallel bars and the high bars. So swing with us. We'll be back. Up on the parallel bars we go as the 1995 Boys State Gymnastics Tournament continues. Mike Manning from Hoffman Estates, a senior at Conant, is up. And Mike just did a mount with a straddle on one bar made famous by Bart Connor. Working nicely, did some nice straddle cut skills. Pressing the handstand. And a nice back off with a half twist. Nice routine, very fluid, nice form, hit all his requirements. Mike Manning from Conan High. Over to the high bar next with Matt Shane. Shane, the winner here in the preliminaries. And again, if you're just joining us, already crowned the all-around champion of 1995 to go with his championship in 1994. This is a great event. It's a stalter mount. He threw a 9.75 in the preliminaries. He Look won it last year. 
one on Giants, right to a release move called a Gengar. Again, incredible show of difficult skills. And he rolls into what's called dorsal grip. That's a requirement on the high bar. Now he's going to prepare for his dismount. And double layout and nails the landing. Man, this guy will not let up. Just nails routine after routine. 9.75 in the preliminary. Could be beating that now. And again, look at the finish on his routine. There's that dorsal grip. The wrists are turned. It's called an endostalter, pirouette. And watch this dismount. Look at that. Nice height, a stretch body position. And nails the landing. What a great way to finish the routine. We'll get that score in a minute. Meanwhile, the parallel bar is 9.0 for Mike Manning. Here next will be Joe Mavis of Arlington Heights, Hersey. 8.75 in the preliminaries. And Joe Mutter with a glide back straddle cut. And now he's swung to handstand. And here's a giant front uprise. And there's another dip swing straddle cut. And a nice small tease on the parallel bars. And again, nice dismount. I was going to mention that that Maltese skill is typically seen on the still rings, and we've seen it tonight on the floor and now on the parallel bars. Now nice routine. We'll see what Matt Shane comes up with for a number in his high bar routine as we'll replay, first of all, Joe Mavis's parallel bars. And here's Joe doing dip swings to back straddle cuts right to the Maltese. Great strength part. And he bails away to a nice flyaway dismount. Great landing. Well, there were some groans from the crowd as Matt Shane shows up with a 9.55. Well, the people felt he deserved better, although that's a fine score. Here's Bob Feinglass from New Trier. Junior, 9.0. Now they've changed it. It's a 9.65. So it's a 9.65 for Matt Shane. You hear the crowd is more pleased. Now here is fine glass. And on high bar, there's a few skills that you're required to do. You, you're required to release the bar and re-grasp. You're required to do the dorsal grip, which I'll try to point out. And you're also required to do some skills where your body comes into the bars. For example, that skill called a stalter. Beautiful combination of stalters to do that. And here's the release move, another flyaway with a half turn called the ginger. So he's got two requirements out of the way. Wow, a full pirouette right to that dorsal grip. What a fantastic show of combination so far. And now dismount, tuck double back. Small step, great routine, really had it all in there. Bob Feinglass from Nutrier. He's hopping out of that dorsal grip. In preparation for his dismount. Nice height over the bar. Tuck position. And again, he's looking for that landing. Still had to take a small step. Still a great set. 8.85 for Joe Mabus on the parallel bars. This is Scott Stifler from Mundelein. Scott just did a nice set. A couple of back stutzes. And again, the strength part, the Maltese. 8.90 in the preliminary. And another show of strength. An L in the V position. Press the handstand. Working very nicely. Great form. In the dismount. Layout back with a half. Nice set. And again, he knows he's done a good job because he didn't give away any tents. Very clean. No execution errors, and he stuck his landing. Stifler, the senior from Underline. And again, there's that giant front uprise. Again, there's that V-sit. Look at that beautiful height. The hips are pressed up towards the ceiling. Straight arms, legs together and tight. And again, the dismount layout with a half turn. Nails the landing. Back on the high bar now. Bob Feinglass, 9.50. Here is Charles Nelson, 8.75 earlier. And Charles, here's a couple of stalkers. Called a blind change. And a 
double roll and then roll something. Very risky. How's this mouth? Double back in the pike position. Nice routine. Very risky part in that double roll into that dorsal grip I keep referring to. Nelson had his problems on the rings. You saw he was much happier when he did his dismount here on the high bar. And again, here's the dismount. Pike position, small bend in the knees, and again, a little short of the landing, had to take that big step. Still, way to, nice job coming back after that uh, disappointing performance on the still rings. Scott Stifler, uh, Stifler with a 9.15 has moved into first place. Here is teammate Scott Hagel, a senior from on the line. Yeah. They got the same haircut, too. It's the, the, the team tradition. <laughs> and he also modeled with that Maltese plunge. Very clean so far. And here's a hollow back press. Again, something you might see on the still rings. And a nice tuck back with a half turn. Had some trouble in the dismount. And again, a very clean routine. Fulfilled his requirements, but he gave away a couple tenths on that landing. Again, a look at Hegel. All right, here's that press to handstand. Again, up to this point, there's really no deductions. And at this moment, he just comes off a little early, doesn't have the rotation needs or the twist, and he has to take a couple hops backwards. On the high bar, Charles Nelson, who we just saw, 8.95. An improvement over his preliminary. Here is Jeff Means, finished third in the all-around. Now looking for another medal. 9.05 in his preliminary in this event. And again, Jeff is very clean, an excellent gymnast, beautiful technique. This is called a stoop jam. And again, those wrists are turned in that dorsal grip. And there's a full pirouette. Back to another full pirouette. And now he's going to prepare for his dismount. Accelerates the Giants. And a sky double back in the pike position. Excellent routine from Jeff Means. Launch that dismount up to the ceiling. He likes that one. You can see it. Watch this. He probably goes out of the picture. Look at the height of this dismount. Way up over the bar. Again, beautiful form. Impec impeccable leg position. Nice landing. Scott Hagel's parallel bars earned him an 8.70 as you look at Jeff Means. Up next on the bars, Chris Fawcett from Lions High School, 9.05, finished third in the preliminaries. Fawcett's a senior also. And again, there's the straddle on the one bar. this. Press the hands in one bar. Great stuff we've done. And there's that dip swing the back straddle cut. Another one. Back up right straddle cut. Moving nicely at this point. And now with this mop. Nice nice layout back flip. Very nice routine. Chris Fawcett from Lions LaGrange. Coaches are happy with it. Chris seemed to be happy with it. Now you take a look again. And here's that backup right straddle cut. And again, up to this point, he really has not given any tents away. Very clean. And the dismount, nice backflip again, a little weak. But at this point, fulfilled his requirements. He still score very well. Jeff Means, a 9.15 on the high bar. You're looking at Brandon Simone, senior from Palatine. 8.75 in the prelims. Brandon got in trouble a little bit there right off the start. Bend his arms. And there's a full pirouette. Back to another full pirouette. Beautiful. Turn into that dorsal grip. Nice eagle giants. Now the dismount. Wow, tuck double back way up there. Great routine.
Brandon Simone from Valentine. Very happy with it. And that landing, or rather the dismount, touched the ceiling. Seemed to. And again, they're already nine feet off the bar with the height of the high bar. And he just booms that way up to the ceiling, just drops out of the sky. Nice routine. Looking for Chris Fawcett's numbers on the parallel bars. 9.10 puts him in second place right now. And here is Edsel Clark, whom we have uh, not seen before, from Downers Grove North, 8.95 in the preliminaries. He is a junior. And Edsel mounts with a nice glide back straddle cut on the end. And again, another strength part you might see in range, a straddle plunge. A nice giant front upright to support. Oh, had a little trouble, but worked out of that. Hung up on his arms. Very unique routine. And a nice layout backflip. Nice landing. Again, ran into a little trouble in the middle of that routine. Looked like he lost his grip, but was able to stay composed and work out of it. Simone gets an 8.60 on the high bar. Let's take a look here on the parallel Watch bars. There's a giant with a half turn, and again, you can see that one arm is buckled. He's not able to push off the bars for the next skill and has to let his legs rub on the bar. Another nice swing half turn. Let's go back to the high bar now. Shane Kaplinski from Libertyville, the junior, 8.80 coming into the final. Again, it is a clean slate for everyone. They don't compile prelim and final together. Change rolling that grip into the dorsal position. And when you go over the top in the dorsal, it's called an eagle jump. And there's a full pirouette. And again, preparing for the dismount. Double layout, pulls it around. Nice routine. Some small form deductions on the dismount and, of course, the step on the landing, but nice, clean routine. Show it to you again. And again, he's accelerating those giants. And watch, off the bar, there's the stretch body position. And again, you can see the knee bend right there. And of course, working for that landing has to take a small step backwards. Back to the parallel bars. You're looking at Robert Galfi right there from Leiden, Edsel Clark with an 8.55. And here's a very unique mount. He glides from the side and stoops through up to an L and presses the handstand in one bar. Great mount. Back up right straddle cut. And that's not a unique skill, a glide tip to back straddle cut. And now his dismount, puck, excuse me, a pipe, back flip. Nice landing, had to take the small step. Got some very unique skills in there, some very nice combination. Let's look at the mount again. We have not seen this yet this evening. And watch this, he's got to get his feet under the bar, and he's got to shoot himself up into that L position. Pulls it up to a V. Shane Bidlinski with an 8.95 in the high bar. Here is Matt Wall from Hinsdale Central. 9.20 tied for fourth in the preliminary. And that skill is called the clear hip to handstand. There's that turn into the dorsal grip. Some nice eagle giants. Line change pirouette. And now he accelerates for the dismount. Open tuck. Ooh. Didn't come out early enough. Had plenty of height, just did not pick up the floor and had to step backwards. Matt Wall, the senior from Hinsdale Central. And again, watch this. He's got plenty of height. Way up over the bar. Open tuck. Plenty of rotation, just does not come out soon enough. And over rotates, it has to take that step back. Whoop. It happens very fast. 
Back on the parallel bars, Robert Galfi had an 8.75. Here is Libertyville's Mike Mirabelli, 8.85, tied for eighth in the preliminary competition. And watch this, Mike can swing. Beautiful stuff to the handstand. And giant front uprise. And look at this. Again, back out of one bar. The L and the V position. Beautiful press to handstand on one bar. So far, beautiful routine. And the dismount front with a half. Nice job. Again, some beautiful swing. Some very difficult parts. Beautiful job. And again, just pressing. It's hard enough to do this on two bars. And they're on one. And the dismount front with a half. And again, he's got to stick that dismount. It has to take a small step. 8.95 for Matt Wall on the high bar. Now we go to John Luby. Luby from uh, York High in Elmhurst. Oh, nice clear hip. Cross. Change. And a roll. You know that dorsal grip. Hops out immediately in the pirouette. Really a fast moving routine. Wow, and a double back over the top. John Luby. Incredible, we got a gas from the crowd. It looked like he was gonna hit the bar. Like the outfit says, probably uh, just before prom. Watch this, we've seen the double backs that usually come off the bottom and move away from the bar. His double back goes over the bar. Very scary skill, and he nails the landing. And he is psyched. That's a John very good Luby, you see, he's got his own cheering section. Mike Mirabelli with a nice score, 9.05 on the parallel bars. And here is Matt Shane, 9.10 in the prelims, good for second. Matt doing a nice job so far. Oh, very difficult skill called the Diamondoff. Another Diamondoff. Nice job. Small form breaks. But again, some difficult skills that we haven't seen tonight. Whoa. And a tuck double back. Looked like he caught his heels and just couldn't take the step and had to fall to his behind. So Matt Shane's final effort in the uh, high school competition does not leave him pleased, but he certainly has had a good weekend. And again, plenty of height and rotation. Really does not spot the floor. Goes over, catches his heel, and he's down that fast. And again, that's a major break. Five tenths. John Luby with a good score on the high bar, a 9.20. And here is Mike Bush. Bush already a winner tonight in the floor exercise. Second on the pommel horse. Watch this. Oh! oh didn't get he it. tried it to Kachev and just could not get his hands back on the bar. And watch this. He's got to counter rotate. He's got to stop his rotation, flip the other way, and come back. And right here, try to grab the bar. And he looked like he almost had it, but just didn't get enough of his hands on the bar to hold on. Was that in his preliminary routine, or is that something he added tonight? No, that was in his preliminary routine. And again, it, these things happen so quickly that a small air can just take you right off the event. He's not going to have much time to regroup. He's got to do the bars right, the parallel bars right after this. And a nice roll into that dorsal rep. Some nice eagle giants. You know, prepare for the dismount. Wow, full two some tuck double. Way out there. And again, that was new from last night. And it just looked like he overdid it and over rotated it. 9.45 last night, certainly won't match it, but not for lack of effort. All right, this is gonna be a double back in the tuck position. Watch it though, right here. He adds a full twist on the first flip. Here's the second flip. Look, and he's got all day to land this, and he just pulls it right past the landing. It looks like he jolts his back a little bit. Over on the parallel bar is Matt Shane with his problems in 8.85, and here is Josh Levin. As you look uh, there at Mike Bush, here is Josh Levin, the freshman. 8.90 in the mm -hmm. preliminary round.
Mounts with a glide back straddle cut. Let's see if he can swing. Beautiful back toss to handstand. Oh, trouble! Again, he tried to do another back toss, and his shoulders tilted back too far. He lost control, and it just over-rotated. Let's see if he can recompose. And it looks like he has nice studs to handstand. And now it's this another incredible skill with Diamonov. Diamonov and it. Just not enough strength. And Remember, again, he's a freshman, so I'm sure we're going to be seeing... Much more strength in coming years. Still a fine effort by Josh Levin. Able to finish it up. It looked like he may have added a couple of skills. I mean, that routine was stacked. I think he did just about every major swing skill that you can do on pillar bars. Watch this. He's on one arm with a full twist. And again, you can see he's in trouble. He's lost his form. And he goes for the second one out of a bad position, and there's no way. Contact on the bar, execution errors. And unfortunately, has to take a couple extra swings. And that's another few tenths deduction. Mike Bush, when he missed a Takacha of 8.90, here's Mike Mirabelli. He has a chance to win this. He was second in the preliminary with a 9.50. He's got to beat a 9.65. Beautiful stalter combination of pirouette. And he rolls into that dorsal grip. Beautiful eagle giants. Again, endo stalter, pirouette. And now a dismount. Tuck double back. Oh and nails the landing. Oh my. That might be it. Matt Shane with a 9.65 is the man and number to beat. And we will see that momentarily. We'll show it to you right now as we wait for the score. And watch this. This dismount. Again, nice height. Sees the floor right there. And again, nails the landing, not giving away any tents in that routine. Waiting for Josh Levin's score. The judges are caucusing. Josh, a very difficult routine, but had a good deal of difficulty with it. Again, you know, you think in a couple of years, a reminder going to look like that Josh Levin will put up there as a junior or a senior. And up to this point on the parallel bars, and actually the same is true on the horizontal bar, except for Matt Shane, there's been quite a few misses. So at this point, if someone can come in, and really hit a nice clean routine and stick that landing, you've got a chance to win it. Here's the score coming up now for Josh Levin, a 7.65. Next up on the P-bar from Hinsdale. Well, the number to beat is 9.15. Scott Stifler right now. And here is Jeff Means. We had a 9.15 on the high bar with his effort on the parallels. And Jeff is also an excellent swinger on this event. Look at that beautiful stutz to handstand. Another stutz. Nice back up right straddle cut. Great. And the thing that impresses me about Jeff is, again, he's very clean. Beautiful body position, really shows off. And that's what you have to do in the sport. I think this is a new dismount. Tucked all back. Oh, he had that. Came out a little early and had to touch his hands. Jeff Means. Third in the all around, competing tonight. And really a fantastic routine up to this point. Prepares for the dismount. Beautiful height, great form. He just comes out of that tuck position a little too early. Has to touch the hands. All right, now we'll turn our attention back to the scorer's table. At the high bar, all the competitors are through. The question is, Mike Mirabelli, the final contestant, needs a 9.65 or better to tie Matt Shane. Fineglass with a 9.5, Bob Fineglass currently in second place. And the judges are taking their time with this one. Well, uh, we have yet to see Mike Bush, who just finished the high bar. He's got to do his parallel bars routine. And here comes the score for Mike Mirabelli, as you look at Mike Bush. 
Nine .50. for Mirabelli, which ties him for second place and gives another victory to Matt Shane. Okay, here is Mike Bush, the final competitor of the evening. Nice mob. It's called a peach back straddle cut. And again, beautiful extension. Really looks good. Beautiful back toss to handstand. Wow. Front and a quarter in the straddle position. Mike Bush. Congratulations all around. This youngster headed off to the U.S. Military Academy. He'll compete there for Army, and let's watch his final effort as a high schooler. Beautiful tuck double back dismount. And again, looking for that landing, one of the cleanest routines we've seen tonight on P-Bars. All right, we will check up on the final scores, total everything up, and be back in just a minute. As the crowd starts to file out of the Forest View Educational Center, let's check up on Mike Bush and the other top finishers in the Parallel Bars competition. Bush, the final contestant, comes up with a big 9.50. Scott Stifler from Mundelein, a 9.15. Chris Foss at sixth in this event a year ago from Lions Township, 9.10. Mike Mirabelli had a good meet, 9.05 to take fourth. And Mike Manning of Conant finishes fifth. Now let's take a look at Mike Bush again, saving the best for last. And Mike really had everything you need in this routine. He mounts with a very difficult skill, the peach straddle cut. And again, a very clean Gymnast, beautiful lines, nice swing, nails the handstand on that back toss. Now watch this. Front flip, straddled in a quarter, has to come around, catch the bars. Again, one of the most difficult skills we've seen in today's competition. Second win of the match for Mike Bush. He started winning the floor exercise and ended winning the final event, the parallel bars. Also took a second place in the pommel horse. Meanwhile, on the high bar, Matt Shane, his second victory of the evening, a 9.65, just a tenth off what he did in the prelims. Mike Mirabelli, second, along with Bob Feinglass. Feinglass, sixth a year ago, each at 9.50. John Luby, who was in the 20s last year, came up to take fourth. And Jeff Means, finishing off an outstanding meet for him as well. Third in the all-around, he comes in at 9.5. One five. We'll be back with the team champion, and we'll wrap things up here in Arlington tonight's right after this. Wave to the crowd, crowd. The broadcast rights for the Illinois High School Boys Gymnastics Championships have been granted to Sports Channel by the Illinois High School Association. Any reproduction or rebroadcast of this event without the express written consent of Sports Channel and the Illinois High School Association is prohibited. As you see, the team champion, Hinsdale Central Red Devils up there. They are the repeat champions, and their ninth boys' gymnastics championships. The Uncle Pika, the coach, has been there for five of them, 23 years at the same location, Rob. This is a fine, fine program. Sue Hendrickson from the IHSA presenting the trophy, and there is Coach Krupika. And again, hats off to Hinsdale Central. Another tremendous team effort in winning the team championship. Let's take a look at the top five teams. Of course, Hinsdale Central, uh, once again, 160.20, followed by Glenbard West, Libertyville, and Mundelein. Of course, our last two events, we've got to uh, give you the totals on those. On the... Uh, Parallel bars with Mike Bush, uh, his second victory of the evening. And uh, on the high bar with Matt Shane repeating his triumph in 1994. Bush and Shane, two double winners tonight. And they really, really dominated those events. They were just too powerful. They had all the difficult skills. And, of course, they hit their routines, which is a key factor in any of these finals competitions. Both are seniors. Both will be going on to college. 
Uh, Shane will be going on, I believe, to Oklahoma. That's correct. And uh, Bush, as we told you, is going to the U.S. Military Academy. And someone we're going to be seeing a lot of, Josh Levin, with a new state record in the pommel horse, 9.8. And this kid's only a freshman. He's a freshman. Pommel horse is the most dip difficult event in men's gymnastics. So as an all-rounder, he's way ahead of the game. He's going to be a great gymnast for the state of Illinois. Okay, Rob, good working with you. And we'll be back to wrap things up in just a minute. At this time, Sports Channel would like to thank David Fry, Sue Henriksen, and all those at the Illinois High School Association for making this championship event possible. We'd also like to thank Skip Ray here at Forest View for his cooperation in the coordination of the championships. Tonight's event produced and directed by Michelle Zafonte Godwin. Coordinating producer is Dave Turner. Graphics coordinator, Brian Duell. Executive producer, Kathy Karp. Vice President of Programming is Mike Bogad. Remote facilities provided by Trio Video of Chicago. For Rob Brown, I'm Mike Lederman saying so long from Arlington Heights. Congratulations to all our winners and the 1995 Illinois High School Gymnastics Champions, Insdale Central High. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of Sports Channel. So long, everybody.